Welcome to this summit about who are you from the head to the heart. And I have the pleasure to introduce you to John J. Prendergast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. And um, you are a retired adjunct professor of psychology and you're also a psychotherapist nowadays, soon to retire. And you've been studying with Sean Klein and Adya Shanti about uh, your true nature, about who you are. Wow. And um, based on your book that I have listened to, your audio book, The Deep Heart, you also have another one, In Touch. But uh, The Deep Heart, I listened to a couple of times because I, I just loved it so much. And you have a very comfortable voice as well. <laughs> and um, it seems like it's about the heart, that it's the journey from the head to the heart. Wow. And the deep heart encompasses everything. It so mm -hmm. I would love to you wow. to speak about the heart and how, how do we go from the head to the heart? Wow. 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 So often, often when a question is posed, um, I don't go to my mind for an answer. Like there's, uh, and I would, it's kind of a question, it's your question to me, but it's a question for all of us, you know, uh, <clears throat> and there's an art to sitting with a question, an essential question like this. So it's just, I let the question in, uh, kind of drop it into, actually drop it into the heart, you know, just feel deeply. It's like, how does one come home to the heart? And the first thing that comes as I sit with your question um, is it comes from our love from the truth for the truth. Yeah. Our love for what is essential, our love for what is most real. Um, and um, that may take a while, you know, to discern. Uh, there's a deep quiet movement, a pull, a call from the core of our being to abide as we truly are. <clears throat> so that's the, it's, it's a, it's a listening and, and a recognition of this subtle, but very powerful call to come home. And meanwhile, you know, we're a human being and we have a busy life and we have relationships and we have work and we have health issues to deal with. And so, you know, our strategic mind is very involved with that. And we're very identified with our minds, identified with all these, all this conditioning that we've taken in, all the stories and images that we've internalized, um, all these different identities. So our attention tends to, and particularly in, um, you know, modern society, tends to localize uh, up in, in, in the head. And it's an interesting question just to kind of notice, where's my attention localized right now? And very often it's kind of behind the eyes or, or in the forehead. And so in my work with people and in my own quest and journey, this has really been um, I, I frame it in the book, The Deep Heart, and as you alluded to, as a pilgrimage of attention. It's like we have many outer pilgrimages that we may be drawn to take, you know, to go to a sacred place. But here are the sacred places inside. And the journey, rather than being miles, hundreds or thousands of miles, is actually from the head to the heart, the sense of when we live up here, we feel like we're estranged and alienated and always kind of slightly on the outside of our lives and, and searching for something to fulfill us. And, and as attention clarifies and as it drops down into the core of our being, we feel like we're coming home. So it requires an emptying out, emptying out of who we think we are 
all the images, all the stories, all the conditioning. So the first step is, um, is really this emptying out, this willingness to unlearn who we thought we were, uh, to actually begin to get comfortable with not knowing who we are. So this allows the mind to actually clarify and to simplify this willingness to not know, this willingness um, to let go of the illusion of control. And, and there's a lot of resistance uh, to this because, you know, if we let go of, of what we think of as control, then this brings up a lot of survival fear. You know, how am I going to make it uh, as a human being? Will I be able to adapt? Will I be able to function? So, uh, and, and if I don't know who I am, you know, how will I <laughs> relate to others? So um, I, I, I have to be honest about that. There's a lot of resistance to actually emptying out and letting go um, to questioning deeply all the assumptions that we have, um, to seeing the limits of the mind. Mind is a beautiful tool, it's an extraordinary tool, you know, but it, and, and servant, but a, but a poor master, because it does not know its source, uh, at least not initially. So for the mind to know its source, for the mind to know there's something, a deeper knowing here is really important. So we open more and more to not knowing, knowing who or what we are, where we are, when we are. In this clarification and simplification of the mind, attention naturally drops down into the heart center. So I'll stop there. <laughs> stop at the heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, so you naturally start living also there, like it, it, this unknown way of living and you're more open that way. You, you talk about the loving awareness, the open awareness. Is, is that oh, what happens? It's what happens. You know, I, I'm, I'm recalling a conversation I had with Jean Klein many years ago. Uh, it was a private conversation. And he said something to me that, that just so deeply touched me and rings true. And uh, he said, abide in the heart not knowing, yeah. abide in the heart, not knowing. So the not knowing, the abiding, the resting of attention in the heart and the not knowing actually opens us up to a different knowing, you know, heart wisdom, you could say. Now, again, easier said than done because often there's resistance in the heart area, mm -hmm. you know, you know, there's, we, we close our hearts, we protect our hearts, we often do so unconsciously. We've had painful experiences of opening and, and feeling neglected or abused or betrayed in some way. We've all experienced this. So, um, you know, often as children, we, we unconsciously or sometimes very consciously say never again, you know, I'm not going to trust. And so the heart closes. It was too painful. And then it gets walled off, so it becomes numb. So it's also true that as attention drops down in the heart and the heart area begins to open, we encounter all this condition, psychological material, sense of vulnerability, um, sense of you know, lacking, sense of being flawed in some way, a sense of being unlovable or unworthy. And because these are painful and very vulnerable feelings, we go away from those and we may even try to skip past them, you know, so-called bypassing and just go to the big space, just go to loving awareness, which we can, you know, but we we're unable to sustain it. You know, attention always contracts back again because there are these areas of the heart that are not, um, haven't been fully welcomed and understood. So there's this very interesting dynamic between opening to true nature which is loving, infinite loving awareness. And then from that, welcoming all the conditioning of the heart area, all these 
parts of ourselves that have been left behind or um, split off in some kind of way. And it's when we're, and, and there's a dynamic movement. It's like the more intimate we are with the heart area, um, the more we, we're able to open to the loving awareness, the more we're able to open to this loving awareness or presence, the more we're able to embrace, you know, what has felt vulnerable in the heart area. And this provides actually an optimal field for uh, release and healing, not because we're trying to heal ourselves, but because this is what this conditioning has been waiting for to be met with this quality of awareness and understanding. So this is a, you know, it's a very subtle and dynamic process. It, it takes time, uh, years actually. Uh, it happens often in stages and steps where attention drops and moves back up again. And, and we become more and more intimate with this area. And, and just to say a little bit more about the heart area, uh, because I've been working with people in depth for like over 40 years and as a psychotherapist, but also as a spiritual teacher in groups. And it's pretty much the same kind of zone that we have to encounter as the heart awakens and opens. Um, on the surface, often a numbness, beneath the numbness, a kind of often emotional pain. Um, it, it can feel you know, emotionally charged and difficult. And as we keep going, we get to a very subtle level of the heart, which I call the soul. And it's, it's beneath the level of conditioning, and it's, but it still has an individual quality to it, like something that's very much Susan, you know, or very much John distinctly so and we have that unknowingly as children you know there's certain just qualities of being uh, ways of being uh, certain gifts that we bring to the world uh, it's very very intimate and very very touching to be able to share you know on this soulful level and a lot of spiritual you know shamanic archetypal Jungian approaches emphasize this soul level and and it's often overlooked, I would say, in non-dual traditions, which is why I like to talk about it. But it's also not the final destination, if you will, not the final capacity or dimension of the heart, because the heart opens up. Often, we can feel it in any direction. We can feel it for, in the fore or back ground, but often it's a, it's a falling back, an opening of a background. And it feels like, as you were saying, an all-embracing, all-inclusive, um, field of loving awareness. And this is our home. This is who we are fundamentally. And, and from this place of open loving awareness, um, there's a sense of intimacy with the whole of life. There's a sense of completion. There's a sense of being undivided. Um, and this is, I think, our deepest capacity and, and uh, sense of homecoming. And, and that is also who we are, that undivided, that whole, and we, we are not this just individual person separate from the world. So it's, it's all a matter of realizing that that's matter of rec recognizing this is who I am, and this is who we all are, and this is what everything is. You know, there's like a, there's, there's stages to this realization. You know, the first is like, oh my God, right? There's this sense of awe, of wonder, of revelation. It's like, I had no idea or I had ideas, but none of the ideas can possibly touch this revelation. This is what I am, you know, whole, complete, you know, and, and so much gratitude comes from this recognition. And we have glimpses and moments of this and when we're more open in our ordinary life, but to realize this is my fundamental nature. Then there's like, this is everyone's fundamental nature. Oh, there's, there's another, oh my God, here. <laughs> right? yeah. And then like it opens even more. It's like this world, this, this self and world opens. And this knowing that we are is known to be the source and substance of everything. That's when we use words of like non-duality or undivided. But these words are clumsy. 
These words are just distant approximations of the intimate knowing and feeling. This is why the heart is so important. Like we can, we can have this realization on the level of the mind and there's a quality of spaciousness and clarity, something very pristine, a sense of just, it has a transcendent quality of being above. When it comes, when this realization comes down into the heart, it's imminent. It's like, oh, this is in the very center of everything, right? So it's not up and out. It's like right into the core of my being and of everything. And it, and it, and it brings that sense of this is true nature, right? Not just my true nature. This is true nature. This is, this is the nature of life. Yeah. And, and just to take it a step further, and, and this step is, I think, less well-known by people on the path. This realization deepens even further into the belly and into the hara. That's a Japanese word for, for belly. And, and we feel the ground opening, this deep foundation of silence. Uh, it has an infinite depth to it very, very steady, very, very peaceful. And this provides support, actually, a foundational support for the heart to remain open and for the mind to stay clear. So this is, a, this is our potential as a human being, to be open-minded, open-hearted, open-bodied. Uh, so the whole body actually is infused with this knowing, this understanding. This is the embodiment uh, the deep embodiment of this understanding. And this is a process of open-ended process, a lifetime's um, discovery. Like we, we can know our true nature and then it transposes to the level of the body-mind with greater and greater refinement and, and depth. And uh, the body awakens actually to its true nature as well. It's like there's a knowing in the core of our being and in the core of the body just all the way through. And that brings a sense of great intimacy with life. And um, there, there's a sense that all is well, and there's also a very dynamic creativity uh, that is heart or, you know, heart-based uh, that, that comes through us. Yeah. And that we can, we cannot do something for that. It, it just happens on its own when we are that open awareness or when we rest in the yeah. open awareness of that's our... right that's right it's not about doing this is not this is not about achieving or doing or trying it's actually about recognizing what's true and what's not true so the coming coming back to that original point the emptying out you know emptying out of all the stories and beliefs along with their reactive feelings and somatic contractions as we, the more and more we empty out, the more we are open to being filled and moved by something much greater than the personal will and the strategic mind. And we feel like, we feel like we're following, you know, we're following something that our, our willfulness transmutes into a willingness, you know, to be of service in whatever way that's true for us, whatever way that's authentic for us. It allows our natural gifts to be shared without attachment to an outcome for instance. And all of this has a, has a very um, spontaneous quality of movement uh, to it. It's not directed by the mind. The mind is, you know, still working quite beautifully, but it's, it's an assistant to this process. It helps facilitate it, but the, but the movement is, is, is as if from the ground up and out. There's a, there's a waking up, a waking down, and then just a radiance out of this knowing. And it's a benefit um, just quite spontaneously and unselfconsciously uh, to others. Yeah. And like when we are born, we are like that naturally, right? We are just open-minded, open-hearted, open-bellied. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then something happens where we get, you, you um, talk about the core beliefs that, oh. that get established in childhood and and that's what we need to kind of unlearn that that's right we learn we're you know we're inevitably uh exposed to conditioning our family 
conditioning or cultural conditioning. And we're like sponges, we're little sponges and we like absorb it all. Uh, and then consciousness just identifies with all these different qualities of the body and the mind. And, and you know, that begins to happen at around 18 months, you know, and, and before that, when, when a, uh, a child looks in the mirror, you know, they don't see the body as themselves, you know, and they speak about themselves in the third person. But at some point, that shifts to first person. So that's consciousness identifies with all of this. And it's a completely natural uh, process developmentally. Then later, you know, as we, from childhood, we grow into adolescence, from adolescence, we grow into adulthood. There's a process of individuation. We become more and more our, our unique self, I would say. And, and, and this is, it's, an, it's very interesting. Um, so both are important. I would say personal, emotional maturity, growing up is important so that we're a responsible and self-aware adult and waking up, you know. And sometimes people wake up early, but um, that is to say early in their developmental process, but they haven't grown up emotionally. And some people are very grown up emotionally, but they haven't awakened to their true nature. And um, uh, clearly, you know, it, it's to, to both grow up and wake up is, uh, gives us the, the fullest human expression of who we are. Yeah. And then everything is okay too, right? Like all these emotions and thoughts, it's fine that they are there because it is our humanness to be. This is the embrace, the full embrace of our humanness. And we're always going to be carrying conditioning. You know, this is another really important point I find in my work with people. It's like we get out of the self-improvement project, you know, of bettering ourselves as a person. Uh, and there's more and more just acceptance of ourself as we are, but it's a, it's not an avoidance, you know, it's an intimate acceptance. And in that intimate acceptance of our experience as it is, that allows a natural unfolding of it. And it will continue to unfold. Uh, I haven't met anyone, and I'm, I have the privilege of befriending a number of wonderful contemporary teachers. You know, we all have our stuff. <laughs> we all have our conditioning, and it's okay, right? There's an awareness of it. There's an awareness that conditioning is endless too, and that's fine. You know, so we get out of life like the way of thinking i still have i'm still angry sometimes or i'm still i still grieve this the still that thought falls away and we just notice oh anger may be here or grief may be here or you know whatever that's part of our human conditioning vulnerability may be here so we're curious and affectionate with it when it arises but we don't dig for it you know we're not in a process we don't imagine that there's some kind of final idealized version of ourself it's all okay it's all good. Yeah, and sometimes it, it seems like when things happen, you know, like we, let's say you have some anger or you have a lot of rage or you feel very lonely a lot or what, whatever it is that we live with that we don't really like uh -huh. so much about ourselves or others. Uh -huh. We need to know where all that arises from or can we just be with it as it is accept it embrace it and then it naturally just kind of dissolve on its own or does it need to dissolve you know because then it, it sometimes it can seem like there is something we have to do with all these feelings and thoughts that that seems not very loving or not very no, there's actually nothing we need to do with them but it is i would say the mind it's really not um possible for the mind to the conditioned mind to accept unconditionally that's not the nature of the mind uh, but it is the nature of it is our true nature is that way so what's most important is rather than trying to accept our experience it's like oh is there something here right now that does accept my experience just as it is and just like be quiet it's like you'll find it it's like oh there it is right there it is this, and then we just rest and abide in that, you know, because this is who we really are. And in, in abiding and resting in that, trusting in that, then there's a natural welcoming uh, of our 
conditioned experience or anger or whatever else may be coming up. And, and that's actually what those parts of ourselves are waiting for. They're waiting for that quality of attention, that quality of kindness, that quality of affectionate attention uh, and recognition. And that allows them to transmute and transform of their own. And that, that, that's a process that uh, you know, takes time, that kind of unwinding. Sometimes, and I'll just say this, that sometimes people, their conditioning is so, has been so um, intense. You know, we're talking about trauma, for instance, abuse and neglect. They really need support with that. They need another being because the wound has been relational uh, in its origin. It will be in part relational in its healing. And so that's part of the recognition is, oh, actually, I need help with this. I need to be with someone who actually can receive this and understand this with this quality that was absent early on. So there may be a phase when we have that support from an attuned and caring and insightful being. And then, and then at some point that's enough, you know, that's enough relational attention that may come from a partner, that may come from a friend, that may come from a, some, a coach or a therapist. It may come just from being in nature. So kind of, just to address that, because, you know, a lot of people have gone through uh, neglect and abuse as well. So um, it's important to, to recognize some extra help may be needed. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a lot of compassion. You can have compassion for yourself, for others. You can share it. You can. Mm -hmm. I, I like your exercises in the book, too. You have some in each chapter. You have some exercise where you can kind of get to know your heart and maybe if you're living a lot from your head maybe very beneficial to kind of breathe into the heart breathe uh -huh. into the heart, uh, listen deeply uh -huh. and so i like that a lot it's it's very nice that you have those because uh -huh. sometimes we don't even know where to start we don't even know yeah yeah these these kind of ways to preliminary ways to drop attention into the heart or to sit with a question, you know, in terms of a, a core limiting belief, um, but, but from our heart wisdom rather than trying to think about it. This is actually, um, you know, an important part of, of the way that I teach and work with people is to really um, encourage them to sit with, you know, essential questions, either about with the truth of their beliefs or or who they really are. And, and I find if guiding people a little bit to bring attention into the heart, to trust a deeper knowing, a felt sense, uh, it's quiet and non-judgmental, uh, is very liberating. Um, and it, 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 it brings the light of awareness into our confusion, uh, into the compartments of the psyche that are uh, veiled. So, so much of this is an unveiling process. It's just like recognizing what's true and, and uh, uh, accessing that and, and letting in the light of awareness. Uh, and and we, we get into a virtuous cycle of more and more intimate recognition of who we really are. Yeah. And awareness is also knowing, right? Yeah, knowing. Mm. Yeah, knowing, being, feeling. It has these all these components. Yeah, there's a being, knowing, and feeling uh, in Sanskrit, uh, sat, chit, ananda. Yeah. <laughs> so there is ananda. There is joy. There's a deep feeling of gratitude and joy to to come home to ourselves. And there's a there's a knowing that it's different than the knowing of something. It's the knowing, the knowing of it's an essential knowing. So um, there's a self-effulgent quality, a self, self, self-recognizing itself quality to this, knowing ourself as, uh, well, Jean Klein would call it being, understanding. Uh, there are different ways to speak of it, but knowing is it's a knowing and a feeling of who we really are. Yeah, and it's also that knowing is the knowing of all this. That's it. So that's the recognition. Yeah. I used to be a bit skeptical about all this, you know, because <laughs> so many people claim to, you know, have the truth and, 
Um, but I've, I've realized this truth that we speak of is not, you know, it's not a dogma. It's not a belief. It's not something we have to talk ourselves into. It's what happens, actually, as we um, empty out, as we unlearn, this spontaneously arises. Yeah. So it's, it's good to bring the attention to one's heart as much as possible because then um, you you learn to live from there. It's, it's like, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, thank you. Yeah, so and it unfolds. It, there are these dimensions of the heart that we're um, often unaware of. You know? And so by learning to listen in this way, um, we... We come home, we come home to ourself and to, to the truth that we all are. Yeah. And, and you hear the expression that the heart is the guru, right? The ultimate guru. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's ourselves. It's, mm -hmm. we, we find truth in ourselves that, and we are already that truth. It's just a matter of recognizing it. That's it. Yeah, this is the, I sometimes call it heart wisdom and, you know, an inner knowing. And this is, this is, um, <clears throat> this is the real teacher, right? Any, any, I think, reputable so-called outer teacher just points us back to this knowing. Any, any, any really so-called outer teacher is just in touch with this within themselves and, and helps others point to this knowing. And as we know it, there's just a natural withdrawal of projection onto others as holding that. And, and we realize, oh, this is here. This is in the very core of who I am. And this knowing, you know, it's, it's a quiet clarity. Uh, it's deeply heartfelt. It's known in the, in the core of our being. And, and, and we take our seat then in our inner authority. It's not an authority over anyone. It's uh, an inner sovereignty in our own lives. That's also, you know, in the belly too. I'm, I'm <laughs> my hand is going down here. <laughs> right. So, yeah, we feel, we feel uh, at ease, deeply at ease in, in this knowing and being of ourself. Yeah. Really embodies the, the true. Yeah, who we are basically it's embodying it that's yeah. right it's viscerally known yeah thank you so much john that that was so beautiful and well, just like your book i can highly recommend it <laughs> so, and and also i haven't read in touch but i i want to for sure yeah. you had asked me to show the books is this a good time yeah. yes please okay so uh, this is uh, the latest book, The Deep yeah. Heart, that came out in 2019. And there is, uh, as Susan said, an audiobook version. You can get that uh, Audible books or audiobook. I forget the name of the other one. Um, and this is the earlier book, uh, In Touch, which came out in 2015. Um, this book, In Touch, is more about the subtle sense of our inner knowing and uh, kind of subtle the portals uh, that uh, <clears throat> I notice working with people when they get in touch with true, how their body kind of lights up and opens up and grounds. And so um, the in, that was the, the first book that I've done. And the deep heart really hones in on the heart center and that as a primary portal to our true nature. Yeah. Yeah, the deep heart, our portal to presence. Presence, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a website, and how can people get in touch with you for a session? Yep. Um, well, the website, uh, yes, is listeningfromsilence.com, and, and I also have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, in terms of getting in touch with me, email is a good way. Uh, I have to say I have a, you know, a full practice <laughs> and a long, long waiting list, so uh, <laughs> I just don't have the bandwidth these days to really work with people individually, but I am, you know, I'm doing um, online retreats and teachings and, you know, as COVID passes, uh, I'll be doing uh, in-person retreats in both the U.S. and 
Europe again. Um, at least that's the plan. We'll see what reality <laughs> has in store. So uh, that would be a good way to connect is go to the website. And I have a lot of, you know, videos and interviews and so on. So there's a lot of interesting material there. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Mm, no, it's been beautiful to be with you, Susan. I feel the depth of your, your knowing and your loving. Yeah. 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 I took it to heart. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah.